Hello folks, I'm Ed Overstreet. Welcome to the Night Sky Imaging YouTube channel. And I'm going to be working on M101. I've taken M101 probably, oh, maybe five times or in that five, seven, six, whatever, about a bunch since uh, the supernova. And I actually had taken it <clears throat> prior to that uh, on several different nights with different telescopes. And so um, I've got a lot of M101, and you'd think with all that practice, I ought to be uh, um, up to speed processing a galaxy. But this is going to be a challenge. I changed uh, telescopes, and uh, I mean I changed cameras, and I took the 533 uh, one-shot color camera off, and I put on the 183. Uh, these are ZWO cameras, and the 183... Uh, color one shot color camera has a ton of ant glow and uh, so I'm gonna have some problems with this because uh, it will not calibrate out because I don't have darks that are appropriate uh, I used 180 second uh, exposures and I have a library of some 183s that are 180 seconds but the gain is different and the offsets are different and the temperature at the time I took uh, those uh, library darks uh, was significantly cooler and so um, uh, they won't work I just know it and that's the problem with amp glow and calibration if you can calibrate it out but you're going to have I need to have at least this is what my experience has been for me I have to have uh, calibration frames that are uh, exactly the same as my subs and uh, so also you should be, I should be using flat darks, uh, at least with my uh, 183 camera and not bias range. And I didn't take those either. I did take some flats the next day. And uh, on the uh, 11th, I took some flats and, uh, but it was daylight and, uh, and I just didn't, just didn't take any flat darks. Uh, you can cap it, throw a towel over and everything else, but light leaks in. It's better to take uh, those flat darks at night. So uh, so I don't have flat darks. I'm going to have to use biases out of a library, and it's going to be a mess. Also, the haze from the uh, fires that are in Canada, and my heart goes out to those folks and uh, to all those people fighting them, but it is here, and... Uh, it's a thin layer of haze, but it has an effect, and it's really had an effect on the signal. So when I took these, uh, I imaged M101 the 9th and the 10th with the 183 camera, and uh, and I'm ready to process it. And so we're going to have to deal with haze. Uh, later in the evening or earlier in the morning, the moon became the moon. And so um, it's just not the best of situations. Um, and I thought, why do this tutorial? And I thought, well, why not? Let's see if we can resurrect the dead. And uh, I did get nine hours of total exposure time in. So that's a gracious plenty. And maybe out of that, with the weighted batch processing script, if I use the best quality, uh, it may be able to purge and eliminate a lot of those files. But I'm going to process this and I'm not going to run, run, I'm not going to blink the images, which is a no no. You should. But uh, I saw the images when I was taking them as they were coming in, and you couldn't tell it was a galaxy. And that's not the case when you've got good skies. Uh, you can see some of the spiral arms at 180 seconds, uh, even on an F7 scope, which is what the edge is. You can see the spiral arms. Uh, not great, but you can stretch them and, uh, and, and know you, you're looking at M101. You can't tell. And there aren't even a lot of stars to look at. So this is going to be interesting. And it may be a total bust. And when it's all said and done, if I have no signal, I won't post this video. So um, trial and error. So let's get started. Uh, let's move over to uh, Pix Insight and uh, see what we have. Uh, 
I think we're going to hit over there. Okay. Uh, I want to load my process icons. I have two versions, uh, a mini and an expanded. Huh. I think I'm going to need all the tools I can get. And uh, let's start with the weighted batch processing script. Actually, let me exit out real quick. Uh, I have a cosmetic correction template that I'm using, and it's right up here. It's this process. I'm going to open it up, and, and I highly recommend uh, using this. There's only one setting you need to go to check use auto detect and check hot sigma and raise it to 3.0 if it isn't already there. Uh, if you've got cold pixels, go ahead and check uh, cold sigma and then save it as a drag the triangle to the desktop, give it a name. I call mine CC for cosmetic correction and uh, you're good to go. So you need to make sure that's already loaded before you um, load the uh, weighted batch processing script. Because once you've got the script open, none of these other icons or processes work. And let's, I'm, you can go to files and load all your directories using files, or you can just load the BIOS by checking the BIOS tab. But I'm going to go to directory and uh, let's go to the right drive. And June and. Uh, Got to make sure I don't load the. I also imaged uh, with a Vixen ED81S and uh, the 533 mono, uh, and I have about nine hours. Uh, no, I have about four hours of that. But uh, this is the folder we want. This is the ninth, and this is the tenth. And I want. This is what I want. So let's load them all, and it should dump every one of those subs in calibration files in the right place. I've gotten to the point where I'm much better organized with my files and whether I use a, a list of the bias or I have master bias or master darks, uh, I try to keep uh, within each image uh, set the right calibration files in case I want to go back uh, months later years later so I think we're good to go uh, we have 180 frames and that is correct that's what I took at 180 seconds that is nine hours of imaging time so uh, first thing I want to do is I'm going to start over here I'm back asswards here but I'm going to uh, find a place uh, let's see I think I'm already there uh, yeah, no, here. And let's create a new folder. I'm going to call this the uh, WBPP for the weighted batch processing. So the PIX Insight files, registration logs, registered files, logs, masters uh, will all be saved there. And I want to make sure auto is selected. I'm going to purge the uh, cache. Uh, under the three options you have I'm going to have maximum quality with no compromises I want it to get rid of the low signal images and I don't feel like fooling with the subframe selector so it's going to load all the garbage files and we're going to try to process some of the good with most of the bad uh, my darks match my subs so there's no need to optimize um, I am going to run the cosmetic correction script and I have it loaded up here so I'm going to apply that. The color filter array is RGGB. Unfortunately ZWO cameras do not write the uh, mosaic pattern into the FITS header or EXIF data just doesn't have it so you have to manually make sure that you have RGGB selected. If you're using ZWO cameras use that. Uh, VNG interpolates uh, a good bit of the color in the image and I don't want that I want the actual 
and the choices you have are super pixel or bilinear and I'm going to use bilinear because I'm going to drizzle if you're going to drizzle then uh, bilinear is the only uh, option you have uh, as super pixel is my choice but I want to use the uh, drizzle integration which is right here might as well go ahead and select it enable and I'm only I'm not going to upscale it and there's no need to upsample because if anything I'm oversampled with the um, the scene conditions kind of make it okay but if the scene conditions were any better I'd be oversampled um, so I want to apply that to all my lights and so let's go back to calibration uh, we also have to select cultural filter array for the flats I do select separate CFA flat scale factors and I apply that <clears throat> And let's head over to lights. There's a couple of things I want to make sure are not checked. And that's right. I do not check either of these two because I do not want this script to stop and wait for me to respond to fails. If it fails to plate solve, I can do that later. Uh, I want to be able to run this and kind of walk away and check back in a little later and, and when it's done. Uh, the same thing with local normalization and there's no doubt in my mind that of the 180 files that it's going to fail to run normalization it may not even be able to find a good reference frame I don't doubt it it, it may not be able to run it at all but if it does uh, I wouldn't doubt at all if it doesn't uh, eliminate a number of our images so I'm um, gonna find out but that's it I just don't want those two checked so back to calibration um do, 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 do. what are we missing here uh under flats nothing we've got our uh our flats going to have the master bias subtracted from it which is because i have a master bias and here's the problem with this if i had a, a flat dark instead of a master bias then the signal, the, the electronic signature that would be subtracted would be the signature at 1.52 seconds. But as it is, the master bias, the master bias differs from the, the flat dark because of exposure time. You take them exactly the same, but with the flat dark, you use the same exposure that you use for your flats, and you just minus that out. So you subtract that out and uh, it isn't going to help me as much as a flat dark wood and that gives you your calibrated flat so that's right and then your uh, lights are going to have the master dark subtracted and and my master darks will show that amp glow in a big way and it should have an effect but it's not going to reduce it uh, it wouldn't it would if this master dark was taken right after I took the subs at the same gain and offset and same temperature than it would have but I was already asleep when this stopped imaging and then it's going to divide the master flat in that and produce the calibrated light so that's the way it's supposed to be so uh, is there anything else we need to do the pipeline is going to look like this I did have auto crop checked that's uh, down here if you don't <clears throat> I recommend it because even if you don't use the auto crop uh, the masters will have the uncropped image if for some reason the auto crop really takes up a lot of real estate uh, it doesn't it may not always work to perfection and you may want to use uh, an uncropped master and do the cropping yourself but you will have those edge artifacts. Uh, I don't know if you dither how you can avoid that. And I do use a high dither um, to try to manage the noise as much as I can. So the pipeline shows uh, the order by which we're going to run through the weighted batch processing script. So let's get this thing going. You can run diagnostics, but it will run diagnostics for me when I just click run. And it's time to run it so let's go and I'll be back when it's done okay we're done you can exit out of this 
and I'm going to bring up the screen transfer function and let's see what we have. Uh, we need navigate there. Uh, now we want the tenth. Here goes. Huh. That's expected. Well. Hmm. I was expecting this. Um, and it's as bad as I expected, but I, I was I'm a little bit surprised that we got some decent signal. Oh, um, I already deleted it. The... Um, uh, out of the 180 exposures, uh, 144 were normalized, the rest of them. And there were 13 that couldn't register because they couldn't find uh, stars to match, matching stars. So uh, this is it. Hmm. Okay. Let's rename this. RGB. We got some work to do and make a copy. I'm going to put this over here. And uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is run deconvolution. So I'm going to bring up Blur Exterminator by Russell Croman. And uh, I'm going to raise the sharpened stars to about 40 kind of aggressive there uh, I'm going to leave everything else as is and I'm going to go ahead and apply okay that did nicely um, we can close that out and we're going to identify this process Make a copy and set that over here. I'm going to go ahead and save this as a project now in case I have a computer crash. Save project, call this M101 and taken and, take and 626 um, 10. 23 and we need to put it in the folder let's see what we do uh, yes that folder I get confused now yeah that folder okay all right save okay that's kind of aggressive, but uh, Boyd did a good job of bringing some of the dust fields out. If we bring up um, the, let's kind of increase the size of this. Um, let's make this box a little smaller and this window a little smaller. And this compare the two this is without blur exterminator and that's with it you can really tell the difference and uh, wow it's defined these dust lanes so much better and uh, it reduced the size of the stars this one which was uh, and they're bloated is now this one so yeah, I, I feel like it did its job. Thank you, Russell Crumman. What a great algorithm. And it's uh, the artificial intelligence that beyond my pay grade. Okay, so we still are having to deal with this mess of a uh, 
of AppGlow, and uh, I, I hate to crop data that I spent two nights trying to gather. Uh, in order to kind of keep the galaxy centered, I'll end up compromising this nice little sweet galaxy down here in the bottom left corner. So I'm not going to crop. I'm going to manage this somehow. And I have a couple ideas. I've been here before with this amp go crap. So uh, I think the next step, though, is to run uh, dynamic background extraction. And we're going to run it a couple of versions of that. So I'm going to bring up uh, a method that I borrowed from, copied from, stole from Sean Nielsen, who is a content creator, uh, YouTube, and he has uh, YouTube channels <clears throat> called Visible Dark, and I'll post a link to his channel. Uh, these sample boxes are rather large, so I'm going to reduce them. And uh, we're going to bring those down to sample size, say, uh, 75. And let's resize all of them. And I'm going to bring these up against pretty close to the edge, but not quite touching the edge. And when I get back, I'm going to place a few more. Uh, I'll put it on pause. It's going to take a second to do this. And when I'm finished and when I'm back with this, I'll bring you guys back. Okay, uh, I'll put another one here. I'm getting to walk on some of the uh, nebulosity that's in this galaxy, so I need to be kind of careful. Let's move this over some. So let's uh, save this and call this uh, edges, DBE edges. And uh, we're going to run division first and see what happens. Come on, at glow. It'll help a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and delete this. And let's stretch. Hmm. Didn't help much, did it? Okay, I still, I can change my tolerance and, and raise it, but I don't want to tolerate, if anything, I may lower it, I don't want to tolerate this bloody gray, gradient, so I'm going to leave it alone, and I'm going to run this again, okay, well good, it went away. So, uh, and some of the gradient is now uh, good. So, good. Better than I thought. So, let's go to subtraction and let's run this. I still have a, a gradient. Uh, that's better. All right. I still have a gradient though from the outs the out here is darker than as you move in it gets a little bit lighter it's kind of a radio gradient so um, let me put this process up here by edges and I'm just going to open up the uh, dynamic background extraction tool and I'm going to change the sample size to 30, 30 is good, and I'm going to put one here, one here, one here, and I just got to make sure I put it on background and not nebulosity, one there. And then let's make this one active. And I'm going to go up to Arial. And I'm going to leave it. Let's try five. Four. Now nah, let's go back up to. Let's put one here. Now nah, I don't want to do that. Let's just leave it like this. Let's go back up to make this active again go up to six seven eight let's go back to 
seven. Let's make this one active and go up to Arial. And that's good. Let's make this one active. Let's go up to Arial. Let's add one more. Uh, we'll go back. That's good. And then finally, this one. And let's. Okay. All right. Uh, I want. Uh, I do want uh, to see what the background model looks like. So, let me uh, save this, and I'm gonna call this. Uh, may end up deleting it. DBE. R A D I A L radio. Okay, let's see if this will help remove the radio gradient. So, and let's stretch this. Yeah. So, yeah. So, see what, yeah, this was my problem. And I think we may have uh, fixed this. Let's, uh, bring this down oh man much better okay so that worked let's uh, save the radio gradient right up here by just dynamic background extraction okay um, now let's see if we've got this plate solved we do uh, if you want to make sure your image is plate solved uh, just click on the image and the bottom two lines uh, are going to be uh, your right ascension and your declination address. So if those are missing, then you're going to need to run your image solver and that's under processes image solver. But I have it. So I'm going to now run spectrophotometric color calibration because I'm going to go ahead and color calibrate this. As a rule, I usually run multi-linear uh, transformation while it's linear and removes some of the uh, noise, but it isn't overly noisy. And since I'm going to run a noise exterminator in after it's non-linear, one of the last things I'm going to do, uh, I'm not going to apply anymore. This thing could get real uh, plastically plastic looking if I'm not careful. Uh, okay, we need a preview window, so I need some background, no stars, that looks good, and let's go ahead from preview, this will do background neutralization while we color calibrate, and <clears throat> I have a Sony 183, so I can use this, but if your camera's not uh, mentioned, then just pick the ideal QE curve. In fact, I'm just going to use the ideal QE curve because I can't tell the difference between that and actual cur uh, curve for my sensor. I don't have an IRUV cut filter uh, in this image. Uh, I used an Orion Sky Glow, which is just a light pollution filter. And uh, so I'm just going to opt to select the Sony, it's a Sony sensor and uh, the Sony sensor RGB option and that's all I need to do so let's uh, apply this <laughs> well that scatter graph is pretty pathetic uh, I'm not even really sure how sure how well this did uh, color calibrating but it is what it is now there's a uh, script by Russell Croman called uh, AutoColor, and uh, I have it here, and it's a, also a good color calibration tool. Um, I highly recommend it. All right, so I'm going to um, change this uh, to DBE uh, edges and radio and SPCC and I'm going to save that and work on the clone because we're about to go um, nonlinear and 
one of the things I want to do. I may not use it, but while it's nonlinear, I want a luminosity mask. Save the mask over here. Um, okay, so so far we've ran Blurk Exterminator, uh, Dynamic Background Extraction, Edges, and Radio, and we have color calibrated this image. So I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it, and uh, I'm gonna use the uh, I'm gonna use this. It's got a a load of green in it, which is expected. The RGG Green Green Blue uh, Mosaic Pattern is loaded with green and so uh, I'll remove that later but uh, let's go ahead and run histogram transformation I want to make sure I reset and we click the history which will bring up this image if your image isn't in this folder make sure that it is and let's see uh, I'm going to run this transformation one more time. And I'm going to drag this onto the bar at the bottom of the histogram transformation and drop it. And it's going to apply uh, the RGB channel uh, curves. And we're going to uh, dump it. And it's going to blow it out. We'll reset it. Let's reset it. And there you go. So we have stretched the image and the amp bow. Let's make sure I'm going to bring up a real time preview and uh, let's look at this. Let's make this a little bit bigger and let's increase this a little bit and let's see what we've done have we clipped anything yep but not a whole lot uh, the histogram transformation did the clipping because I've not done anything since we're clipping a little bit of data there so we're going to drag it over here it's going to actually darken things but we can uh, resurrect that in curves so let's apply that and that will be our stretch okay uh, we are now stretched so I'm going to call this um, nonlinear and uh, we did run the histogram transformation tool because there's generalized hyperbolic stretch that we could have used and uh, there's easy stretch we could have used but uh, this is what we opted to use what I opted to use and uh, all right let's see if we can't beat up this thing here so I'm gonna make a, a mask I'm gonna go up to script and uh, utilities and game. This is another mask by I think Russell Croman. Um, and I'm going to select an ellipses maps an elliptical, and I'm going to come over here. Make this a little bit, a little bit bigger, and we come out to about there. Bring it back a little. Let's go up a little bit. And this is going to be a uh, gradient mask. And that's what I want, I think. And I'm going to drag this over here. And uh, I'm going to go up to mask. There's no point in showing it. Uh, and what I want to do is uh, I want to bring up curves transformation you can find this under process all process curves transformation uh, 
or it's under intensity transformations. And so let's bring up a real time preview and we'll make sure RGBK is selected and let's drag this down some and see how that works. Did our galaxy get affected by that? Uh, let's try off and on. Maybe a tad bit. Not much. Okay, let's apply that. And close it out. And let's remove the mask. And this is the game mask. We'll set that over here. Now, um, I want to remove the stars because I'm going to work on saturation next. But I want to saturate the stars independent the galaxy. So I'm going to bring up Russell Croman's Star Exterminator and uh, drag and drop the process on top of... Oop, before I do that... Uh, And this is game mask. Uh, so I'll know what I did. I'll know exactly what I did. If I come back to this and I'll look for this. Actually, let's uh, change this to game Okay, so I, I will know that's how I tried to tackle this uh, mess. What I think I, what I should have probably have done is remove the stars first and then did the mask because I don't know if I removed any stars uh, that were, well, I don't know if there's any stars there or not before, uh, but I'm not. Okay, uh, let's run this then and uh, remove the stars. Okay, close it. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to rename this stars and make a clone. over here and then we're going to rename this starless and we're going to make a clone and we're going to put this over there and it's time to save this project and all the steps that we've done thus far Okay, I did mention that out of uh, 180 images, it ended up uh, this weighted batch processing script uh, eliminated um, all but 144, so from 9 hours to 7 hours. And you'd think there would be a lot more signal than this with 7 hours of exposure time. But uh, again, it, it light pollution and uh, haze and some clouds, uh, thin layer clouds that were high altitude uh, were, were part of the mix. And so even with that, I am kind of surprised. We have the supernova here still looking good. And uh, in fact, it's so bright that it wasn't removed with star exterminator. Everything else was, but this is the supernova. And uh, it's pretty cool. So uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to, let's go ahead and work on the stars first. So I'm going to put uh, the starless one up over here and we'll come back to that. And uh, I want to look at the stars because I think they're kind of funky. And... I didn't think they had much color, but uh, 
there is some color, but they are kind of funky looking. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the morphological uh, transformation tool. And uh, I'm going to change this to uh, seven elements and pick. We want uh, morphological medium selected and let's run it. Okay, uh, there is the after, and there's the before, after, before, after. It tightened them up a little bit, so that's good. Uh, I'm going to run SCNR because we have some green stars. I'm going to have to run this on both uh, the stars and on the galaxy. And so let's do that now. And my green stars are kind of blue now. That's good. And so let's, uh, I think that's all I'm going to do. And I'm not going to change what I did uh, to the stars, but uh, I almost always run morphological transformation. Um, so now let's work on this galaxy and let's make a layer, a luminosity layer. And I'm going to set this over here with the other mask because we're not going to use it as a mask. I borrowed this idea from uh, entering into space. I don't know the name of the uh, content creator, but uh, I will put his website in the uh, description of this YouTube video. And so I now want to bring up LRGB combination and I'm going to reset it. And I'm going to take this uh, starless image that I made, which was really a, like a loom mask. And uh, the only thing I'm going to change is saturation. I'm going to drop it to 360. And before I do that, though, let's go ahead and run SCNR on this and remove the green gradient. And I like that better. Knew it would. And so let's uh, bring up the LRGB combination again and drop this. Turn off the R, G, and B channels. Drop this down to 360. And what we're going to do is increase the saturation of the natural colors. We're not going to have any hue influence on the colors at all. So if it's blue, it's just going to be a richer blue. If it's reddish, it's going to be a richer reddish. So let's uh, drag this triangle on top and start it. I'll probably do this two, three maybe as many as four times. Okay. See the difference. Do it again. Oh yeah. Let's do it again. All right. Now we're looking kind of good there. Noisy, but we're going to take care of that. Boy, that core is hot, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, how did I let that happen? Hmm. I guess a histogram transformation. Well, we're not going to help it any because we're going to have curves. I guess I could put a mask there. Uh, but, uh, hmm. All right. Am I going to run this again? Let's run it one more time, but I may take it back. Nah, I think I'm going to leave it. Okay, let's close this out and let's bring up curves transformation and let's create a real time pre preview. <coughs> and this is draw. Just want to look at this closer. All right, uh, let's see if we can't lift some of these colors. And let's make somewhat of an S-curve. 
and apply that. Okay, look at my uh, uh, gradient, how that's affected by it. Uh, I mean my, uh, not gradient, uh, amp flow. I knew I'd see it, it percolate sooner or later. All right, let's uh, take that back. And we're just going to close this and come back. I'm going to take this, uh, which it was a uh, used for saturation, but uh, I'm going to uh, bring back the game mask and I'm going to drag it over here and apply it to this and not show it. I'm also going to invert this mask because I just want to work on the galaxy and uh, so I want to bring up curves and I want to it's a match I'll put the mask on yeah and I just want to brighten that's all I want to do. Brighten up, about had it. Now keep in mind this is a mask. And now I'm going to uh, invert it, reset, and this. Let me close this out. Get another real time preview. Again. We're just working on the uh, mask, so. All right, let's apply that. Okay, now I've got a mask. And I want to take, uh, I made a mask on a mask, so let's remove that. And I'm going to put this over here. Mask. Don't need to show it. And we're just going to work on the mask. And hopefully, not that, um, but this mask will keep that ugly amp glow from reappearing. So let's bring up curves again. Let's get a real-time preview and let's bring up this and what is happening to our I don't need 17 iterations what's happening here okay the amp glows fine for now I'll tamper it down again but let's bring this up some more and maybe a little S curve now let's apply that. Now let's reset and let's invert the mask and let's bring this down the outside area where the amp glow is, the background. And then let's invert the mask again, reset, and let's bring the Galaxy back up a little bit, doing these little iterations and apply it. And then let's invert and pull it down. Ah. And apply it. Let's apply it one more time. And let's invert it again. 
or put it back to where it's supposed to be and let's raise the galaxy up just a little bit more not the amp glow uh, let's, in, let's apply that Let's go back to uh, invert. Let's bring the background down because the mask is helping, but it's not completely knocking out the amp glow because it keeps surfacing every time I raise the luminosity on the All right, let's go back and invert again. Reset and one last time. Let's raise the. Let's add some luminosity to the galaxy a little bit, and let's go over to saturation. And let's bump that up some. And hit that. Probably could do it again. In fact, let's reset this. Let's do it again, but let's just do it a little bit. And apply that. I get carried away and I can overdo these things. Alright, so we now have removed the mask. Now we have our galaxy. And without adding the stars back, because I don't want to run Noise Exterminator on the stars too, I'm going to bring up Noise exter Exterminator and let's see if we can't uh, bring the noise down. I'm going to use about 80. And uh, now let's go about 75. Let's go 75 and give it a whirl. Alrighty. Eh, I don't know. It got rid of it, but goodness, we uh, may have overdone it. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it as is and now it's time to combine the stars back and that'll be the end of this other than uh, I'll evaluate it when I get there but uh, I may run local history in fact I'm going to do that now before I add the stars back I think we'll look at it and let's uh Okay, that's uh, let's drop the curl down and let's drop the amount down. And let's turn it off on up. Oh. Okay, it's off, it's on, it's off, it's on. All right, I'm going to apply that. That looked pretty good. I right, says so I want some grain to it. I don't want it to be, uh, that, that, that helped a lot. So, all right, let's close this out. Now, uh, I'm going to um, add the stars back, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this icon starless for rescreening on top of uh, this image. And I'm going to put this over here. That's my starless image. Now I've got starless one. And I'm going to bring my stars up. And I'm going to use stars for rescreening. And I'm going to put my stars over here. And I have stars one. So I have stars one, stars two. This is Luca Matico's uh, rescreening, uh, or, or his method for bringing the stars back. And so what we're going to do uh, is. We're going to drag this onto the starless image. And we've added our stars back. And 
and this is what we got. Uh, some more time could be spent on this amp glow issue, um, but mm, I don't know how much better I could make. I could make it. I I know others with a more uh, expanded understanding of Pix Insight would probably have approached this different ways, but this is how uh, I would have approached it. And here is our uh, supernova right here, and uh, bigger than bear. And the geometry of this, I probably could have flipped this and or mirrored it, and you can do that with fast rotation. Uh, which is under geometry if you go up to process and go down to geom geometry then you have your uh, fast rotation here but I could uh, have picked a horizontal mirror and flipped it and it would just flip everything over but I kind of got, got used to looking at this and I think I'm just going to leave it this way and uh, I could also possibly take it into Photoshop and I could uh, manage this background a little bit different where this amp glow was because I see a little bit here on the edge that's hard to get rid of uh, because it's so prominent light that uh, we had to deal with it all right folks well uh, that's it uh, have a great rest of the day and I'll catch you the next time I do this